Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 105 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible. And if you would like to support our ministry, the links are conveniently placed in the show notes. We'd love to have you on the Building Great Lives team. Here at the Building Great Lives podcast, it's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying these messages of hope reach every possible person in every possible nation. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the three elements of of the will of God, how to find his will, how to fulfill his will, and how to finish his will. And what do we mean by will of God? The will of God is God's sovereign plan, God's individualized purpose for your life. And I am here to tell you that God has a will for you. God has a purpose for you. And so many times we mystify the will of God. It's a spiritual thing for sure. But finding the will of God is not some spooky, hard to discover, very hidden thing. God desires for you to know his will. God desires for you to be a part of his plan. And we're going to discuss things that will help you find the will of God. But I want you to know from the very beginning, it's time to understand that when you are seeking for God and hungry for God, you will find his will. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God is not hiding himself. He's actually directing you toward him. And as you take the steps in your relationship with him, you will find his will being revealed, sometimes one step at a time. That's how we learn to live by faith. But know this from the very beginning. God is not trying to hide his will. He's not playing hide and go seek with us. He wants you to know his will. So why is it important for us to know God's will in our lives? Well, I want us to take a look at the story in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus. He said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now notice what Jesus said. He's speaking to Nicodemus about seeing the kingdom of God. And he says, if you want to see the kingdom, you must be born again. Jesus continued in verses 4 and 5. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Notice in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus said, If a man is not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then later he said, Except a man is born again of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The reason that I wanted to lay this foundation is because the Lord is showing the importance. You cannot see the kingdom. You cannot enter the kingdom 
except you are born again of water and spirit. So there is an emphasis placed on salvation and the kingdom. And Jesus continued in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus now places an extreme emphasis on doing the will of God. He said those that do the will of God are going to enter into the kingdom. Those that just simply cry out to him, but do not do the will of God, they will not enter the kingdom of God. So it's important. If the Lord places this much emphasis on doing the will of God, then we certainly need to understand the level of importance that it plays in our lives. I want to know the will of God. I want to fulfill the will of God. And I want to complete all that God has called me to do. So understanding the will of God, it can be divided into two basic categories. The first God has a universal will for all of us. Simply put, this means it's God's will for every single one of us to do some things. These are things that we don't need to pray or fast about. They are just simply God's will for us to do. For an example, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 through 22, the Apostle Paul said, And we urge you, brothers... Admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all all circumstances. Notice this, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then Paul continued, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. So the Lord is laying out through the apostle Paul that there are some things that are just simply the universal will of God. Again, these are things that we don't have to pray about. We don't have to fast about. It's the will of God for us to do these things. So God sets a universal will for all of us. Those are things that we get up every morning striving to do. Those are just set in stone. This is the will of God regarding every man. And then secondly, God has a specific, a personal, an individualized will for each and every one of us. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has a specific, a personal will for your life. These are areas you do need to pray and fast about. Some have claimed that God doesn't have a specific will for each of us. I do not believe that. I believe the Bible very clearly states that God has called each and every one of us. That is one of the very reasons that we believe in the sanctity of life. From the womb to the tomb, it's life that God has given, and that life has a purpose. If each individual life did not have a purpose, then life would not be valued. And we find biblical evidence for this because in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one, verses four through 10, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet 
unto the nations. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid, for I am with thee to deliver thee, and I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. God was very direct with Jeremiah. This is what I've called you to do, and I ordained you to do these things, to go to these places and speak these words, to tear down and to build up. I have called you to do all of this even before you were born. Now, understand what I'm saying. I do not believe that this will of God, this individual calling was for Jeremiah only. I don't believe that. I believe it's for every one of us. This scripture in Jeremiah teaches us that God sees us before we're even born and has a plan laid out for us, a direct plan, a specific plan for us to accomplish. So these are areas we do need to pray about. These are areas we need to seek God's direction for. As some things are universal, Universal, there are some things very specific. God calls us to certain things, to certain places, to say certain things. I believe that. I believe that God has called you, listener, to something powerful. You are not ordinary. You are special in the eyes of God. Just as every snowflake has its own design, you were created in the image of God to fulfill a purpose, to do the will of God that no one else was called to do exactly like you. You are uniquely you, and God has positioned you in the this world for such a time as this. I believe that, and I feel the touch of the Holy Ghost moving right now. God is looking to encourage you, listener, and remind you that you have a calling on your life. It may not be for the pulpit. You may not be a singer. You may not be a teacher. Wherever you are, God has positioned you for a purpose. The enemy would love to come in and rob you of your purpose, but I want you to know God's plan in your life is greater than the plan of the enemy. The plan of the enemy will fail. The Bible tells us that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. It didn't say that a weapon wouldn't be formed. It just said that the weapon that is formed will not prosper. The enemy wants to defeat you. He wants to rob you of your calling, but you need to rise up in the Holy Ghost right now and accept the fact that you have been called to something powerful. doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what your last name is, how much money you have or don't have. God's calling on your life is greater than anything that could come against you, and it's time to accept that. Part of becoming powerful in God is not not about your talent and thank God for talented people and we want to work hard and develop our gifts and our callings Yes, but God is looking at us and placed an anointing on us that is greater than talent. The will of God, he did not look at us and call us because we were the mightiest. As a matter of fact, as the Lord is just reminding me in the spirit right now, he did not choose Israel because they were the greatest nation, the mightiest nation, the largest nation, or the wealthiest nation. He chose them in their state of being strong small, in their state of being broken. He chose them as small so that he could raise them up because he loved them. God had a will for Israel. God has a will for you. And God's going to raise you up, listener. I feel that right now. You should receive that word from the Holy Ghost. God's raising you up. It's time for you to recognize there is a will of God on your life. It's time to find it. It's time to fulfill it. It's time to do it all in his name by his power. Now, the will of God is not always easy. Jesus, God manifest in the flesh, is our greatest example of this. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39 says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, 
not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing that his flesh was about to suffer and die, his flesh cried out and said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to feel the whip. I don't want to feel uh, the crown of thorns on my head. I don't want to feel uh, all of the pain of the nails at the cross and the spear in my side. I don't want to feel that. But yet something inside of him cried out, not my will, but your will, Lord, your will be done. So if anybody tells you doing the will of God is always easy, just smile, just smile and be kind, but know that the will of God is not always easy, but it is always worth it. His suffering brought great healing. It still is healing today. His suffering brings great salvation, still working today. And so when you do the will of God, no matter how hard it is, no matter where you have to go or what you have to leave behind, when you do the will of God, even though it's not easy at times, there will be a move of the Spirit that will touch lives, and it is worth it. And for those that say, well, I don't know if God is really calling me to a specific place or ministry. Maybe I could just follow the things that are God's universal will, and maybe I could just win souls wherever, and that's all that counts. Well, I'll give you another example. Jonah was called to a specific people, Nineveh, with a specific message, repentance. Jonah ran from the will of God because it wasn't where Jonah wanted to go. Jonah didn't mind having the call of God on his life. Jonah didn't mind being a prophet. Jonah didn't mind hearing from God. But when God directed his steps to a place he didn't want to go to preach a message that he didn't want to preach, now we find that inner conflict regarding the will of God in his life. It's not always easy, but it is always worth it. And when you flee the will of God, Jonah will teach you that storms will come in your life. And you think you deal with things now. You think you go through difficult days now while you're in the will of God. Let me tell you, I don't even understand how people that are outside of the will of God manage to go through difficult days by themselves. If we've got to go through difficult things, I'd much rather go through them in the will of God with God on my side, calming every storm, helping in every way, directing my every step. In the will of God is the best place. You'll go through some storms, but you'll also see peace come to those storms. Way too many people make the will of God out to be something mysterious, spooky, or difficult to find. I don't believe this is the case. I don't believe God is trying to hide his will from us. I believe God desires for us to know and follow his will. Sometimes we as humans overcomplicate the will of God. And so I want to break the will of God down into three elements. And each one of those elements, we'll talk about some things that I truly believe that God has spoken to me. And I pray it helps you the way that it helped me. So the first element of the will of God is find his will. How do we find the will of God? That's a great question. So let's talk about it. First, we find the will of God by the word of God. You find the will of God by reading the word of God. God will never tell you to do anything that goes against his written word. He will never tell you to do it in a way that violates his word. So if God speaks to you to do something and it feels like the doors are not opening and you try to force them open and by forcing them open, you begin to violate the word of God, I want you to understand you are not in the will of God if you go against the word of God. You don't have to force the will of God. You don't have to force the door open. If the door isn't open, maybe 
It's just not the right time yet. So the first principle of finding his will is by the word of God. The second is prayer to God. The will of God can be discerned in prayer. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern What is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and perfect? You will find the will of God by seeking to know God more. So how do you find the will of God? Seek to know God more. And as you learn to know him more, as you discover him, as you connect with him in prayer and in worship, the closer you get to him, you will begin to discover or discern the will that he intends for your life. Prayer will get you close to God. The closer you get to God, the more of God that you will see, and you will begin to find your place in the things of God. Thirdly, the place of God. Go to church, listen to preaching, worship, be a part of what God's doing. God will speak to you during times of worship, during times of prayer, and during times of preaching. God will speak to you. Fourth, guidance from the people of God. Get godly advice from people that you trust, people that have your best interest in mind. Go to them. Talk to them about what you're feeling. Don't be afraid. Remember, you're going to someone that you trust. Go to them, talk to them, say, this is what I'm feeling. What do you think? Maybe they will see something. Maybe they will help guide you through some things, open up some scriptures you didn't see, give you some advice that you didn't think of. There is safety in the multitude of counsel. And the fifth way of finding the will of God is pay attention to your personal passions. The things you feel passionate about, your interest, they are normally there for a reason. God places it in our hearts. Remember the Bible says in the Old Testament that the Lord turns the hearts of the kings. He makes a way in the desert. He makes rivers in the desert. But the key to this is that God turns the hearts. Now, this isn't God manipulating us. This is God placing things in our hearts that turns us toward certain things. So what are you passionate about? Is it singing? Is it Bible studies? Is it preaching? Maybe it's business, but it's part of the kingdom of God. What What are you passionate about? So you find that and begin to seek God through that. There's a reason that you have the interest that you do. You can take those interests and use them for God. So trust the interests that you have. They are put there by God for a reason. And lastly, the best way to find the will of God is to serve God. Do what you know, then God will reveal what you don't. In other words, take the steps you know. Don't wait for the whole journey to unfold in front of you. It rarely happens like that. The Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. When God called Abram, he told him, he said, you go to a land that I will show you. When you get there, you'll know it. But you've got to be willing to get up, go. You've got to be willing to walk by faith. You've got to be willing to journey one step at a time. That is not always easy. If you're anything like me, you would love to have it all laid out and know exactly where everything everything is going to fall into place at and how it's all going to work. But that's not how God works. God reveals moments and God reveals steps and God reveals his will in these things. And we learn to walk with him by faith. And so the best way to find the will of God is to serve God. Do what you know. Take the steps that you know to take. You may be thinking, well, I want to know five steps, but I only know two. I promise 
promise you, if you will take those two steps that you know God spoke to you, God will reveal the next step and the next and the next, and God will be faithful to you. That's learning to discern his will and then walk in his will. So those are six ways that will help you find the will of God. And the second element to the will of God is fulfill his will. After you find it, do it. First John chapter 2, verse 17 said, And the world passeth away, and the lust, that word means desires thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It's talking about those that have worldly desires fade away. They don't last. But the ones that will last forever are the ones that do the will of God. It's not just a matter of knowing the will of God. You've got to, as 1 John chapter 2, verse 17 says, do the will of God. You've got to put some action to what you've discerned. Once you know it's God's will, it's time to do it. So many people spend a lifetime talking about things but never actually take action and do the thing that they're talking about. I cannot tell you how many people have told me, I really want to start a church. I feel to go to this place. I feel to evangelize. I feel to be a missionary. I feel to start this business or go to this school. I feel this. And then you see them a year later and they're back talking about, oh, I feel to do this. And I feel to, and it's the same things. But there's been 12 months. Now, I understand, as we discussed earlier, all things have to be done in the timing of God. That's key. We should do an episode on how to discern the timing of God at some point. You've got to do it in the right timing. And sometimes it's not in a week or a month or a year. Sometimes it takes much longer. We see this in the journey of Abram becoming Abraham and the time and the process of how they had their promised son. We see this all through the Bible. It took years for some people, but they were always on the move, making the steps they knew to make. And that's how they got to the place that God had called them to be, not just standing around talking about a land they had never seen or a child they had never had. So many people talk and dream, but they never do the will of God. You've got to put some action to the things of God. That's why Jesus said in Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35, there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he, Jesus, answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And they looked round about on them that said about him and said, Behold thy mother and thy brethren. And Jesus said, For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Now, I know there's a lot to unpack in that scripture, but let's just look at the simple fact that in verse 35, he said, those that are family with me are not just those that talk about the will of God, not just those that discern what it is or dream about becoming. He said, those that are part of my family are those who do the will of God. It's important. If you want to find peace and comfort and power in the Holy Ghost, then you've got to take on these elements of the will of God and do them. You've got to fulfill his will. Matthew chapter 13 tells us a powerful story about a man who bought a field. Verses 44 through 46 says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. There's some keys to this. Both of these men sold all they had 
to gain the thing they did not have. They were willing to sell everything. That means there's something that had great emotional value to them. There's something that that had been part of their family for years, but they sold that. They were willing to leave that behind because they found something of greater value. That is how the will of God works. Sometimes you have to live in a manner you never expected. Sometimes you have to sell things you never expected. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices for things in ways that you never expected. But I promise you the treasure in the field and the pearl of great price is worth everything that you would ever have to give up in this life. The will of God is so important. But can you imagine if the man that looked at the field said, you would not believe all of the great treasure that I found. What if the man that saw the pearl went back and told all of his friends, you'll never believe the size of the pearl I found. You'll never believe the size of the treasure I found in the field. And some people will spend their lives talking about what they saw, but never selling anything to obtain that. What a tragic telling Matthew chapter 13 verse 44 through 46 would be if both of these men just went back to their friends and family talking of a great story of a treasure and a pearl, but never did whatever it took to obtain that treasure and own that pearl. Some people want what they don't have, yet are unwilling to sell what they have to gain it. Some people love to talk about doing things for God, but they're unwilling to do whatever it takes to fulfill it. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? A literal translation of Galatians 5 and 7 is, you were running well. In these races that Paul talks about in Galatians and Corinthians, each runner was to stay in his own assigned lane. You did run well. You were doing good. But who hindered you? Who stopped you from doing the will of God? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 tells us about Demas. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed away. I know that we look at this and we think that Demas just backslid, that he just stopped loving God, but that's really not what that text means. The original language of this text, it's referring to the comfort of this world. This present world means the comfort of the world. Demas no doubt loved God. Demas loved Paul, but that cold jail cell must have just not been his idea of ministry of doing the will of God. So in the process of doing the will of God, he stopped and walked away from the things of God. I want to fulfill the will of God. Listener, God's called you to fulfill his will. It's time to put some action in your prayers. It's time to do what you know is right. Don't delay. Do what's right. Let God reveal the timing and then step through those things. Take action. Take ownership of what God has called you to do and go and fulfill the will of God. And the third element regarding the will of God is finish his will. You will face hardships. That's just part of life. The enemy will fight you. There will be times that just life is good and life is bad. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. There will be times that you feel like rejoicing. There will be other times you feel like giving up. Just don't stop. Now that you've started, finish the will of God. Never give up. No matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, make up your mind. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to finish his will. I'm going to do everything that God has called me to do. I am not going to let the enemy distract me and defeat me. I am going to complete the will of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 said, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Did you catch that? After You've done the will of God. Finish it. Don't give up. 
the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul finished his course. He did not give up. The Roman jail cell shipwrecked, beaten, and stripped of raiment, yet he did not give up and could declare that I am more than a conqueror. I have defeated the purpose of the enemy. I am more than a conqueror. How is this? Because he finished the will of God. The Bible said of David in Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, for David after he had served his generation by the will of God, fell on to sleep and was laid unto his fathers. David had many ups and downs, but David finished the will of God. You must finish your course and never give up. These three elements of the will of God are active in your life right now. God wants you to be able to understand his will, to find his will, to fulfill his will, and finish his will. No enemy that has risen up has the ability to overcome you, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Listener, God's called you to do something great. It's time for you to do it. It's time for you to accomplish what God has called you to do. No more delay. Rise up and accomplish the will of God. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray for you, listener. I want to pray that God would encourage you and help you do the will of God. Lord, I'm asking you to reach down right now wherever each listener is at in their walk with you. God, I pray that you would reveal your will to them. Give them the courage and the strength to step out by faith and do the will of God and never give up. Help them to accomplish all that you have called them to do. Lord, I know that your vision for their life is great. They will accomplish all that you have called them to. And as always, Thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend, maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum, that's G-I-L-L-I-A-M, on threads and Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach me at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, let's keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions. 